I sense a trap. The show runs on contrivances. I find the writing to be poor. We talked about the Jedi escape at the beginning with the awning break. This Jedi, Nari, will subsequently locate Obi-Wan in the desert at night. How did he track Obi-Wan? If you don't think we need an answer, that's a contrivance. The presence of the Inquisitors on Tatooine means Obi-Wan must be on high alert for Luke's safety. He needs to stake out the Lars family homestead until he's sure that the threat is gone. But instead, instead he'll actually leave the planet. And the way that he leaves the planet is by simply buying a ticket and walking onto a transport, no disguise, wearing his lightsaber. He'll buy a disguise for Leia, but he won't use a disguise on Dayu either. At times he doesn't even have his hood up and he's, and he's wearing his lightsaber. He's smarter than this. In, in the words of another channel, this is the caravan of garbage. The whole thing about getting on the ship blows my mind. Because other shows in the Star Wars universe had much more stringent requirements of getting on a commercial transport with weapons. The stuff that Han Solo had to go through in an Imperial uh, concourse... Getting on a plane on Corellia is not easy. We saw in the Mandalorian show, like, you have to check your guns at the door and put them in a special container and all that kind of stuff in order for you to get on. But this is a very specific weapon. It identifies a very specific type of person. And for him to just have it flapping around, again, it's not in alignment with what is reality on the ground in this show. You are on Tatooine, which is a planet run by the Hutt Cartel. And from what I see, uh, the economic conditions are not necessarily the best unless you are a part of the cartel. And so there's people there who are probably motivated by money and will do uh, pretty much whatever it takes to get paid. And so if you are the ticket taker there at the old mosque, whatever, where he's getting on that ship, uh, if you notice that, you're calling the cops, right? You're calling the Empire and you're saying, hey, I hear you guys don't like Jedi. As a matter of fact, I think some of your Inquisitors were just in downtown yesterday chopping off hands and killing people because they're looking for a Jedi. Well, I found one. Where do I pick up my credits? Uh, the whole thing about the disguises and all that stuff, yeah. It's like everybody's just wandering around. He's wandering around with his, with his hood off while his picture's being shown everywhere. And he's like, oh, we must, we must be cautious. Oh, yeah. Well, then put your damn hood up. At least try and make an effort to not be detected. That whole scene goes into my all of my problems with the character of, of Leia and how she's written and, and all that stuff. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But all these, again, contrivances, right? They all just yeah. stack up. And you can definitely sense in the, in the writing of the show that the in-between pieces, they just didn't get the love and attention to detail that they needed. Um, Bail Organa reaches out to Obi-Wan because Leia's been kidnapped. Mercenaries can infiltrate, uh, reconnoiter, and kidnap on Alderaan without detection, just outside the royal palace. Okay, Leia, this was established because Leia goes into the forest, it doesn't tell anyone, she often runs off. She's carrying a droid that would have been great as far as alerting others to her peril, possibly even tracking, but it just remains in her pocket throughout her run Again, we have two scenes of a 10-year-old girl avoiding adults um, that are really rather rather laughable and silly. But back to Bail Organa. Bail Organa feels it's necessary for Obi-Wan to take the case. Bail Organa is a very high-ranking member of the Rebel Alliance. And you could say, well, at this point, it's still developing. He has access to Ahsoka. Ahsoka is one of his fulcrum agents. Before even taking it to the level of Ahsoka, I would think that Bale has other contacts and certainly other resources to take on, flee, and I, I, I hate to rank the lives of children, but Obi-Wan, he just can't leave. He just, he just can't. There's so many other things going on in the canon right now that would work much better for the whole Leia 
kidnapping situation, but because reasons, right? Because we need it, because we have to have it. Like bringing in Leia into this whole thing doesn't make any sense at all. It's supposed to be a show called Obi-Wan Kenobi or Kenobi. It's supposed to be about a guy in the desert watching over Luke. It's too much. It's, it's too convoluted. It's it's destroying so much of canon. The message that Princess Leia sends to General Kenobi, that you know, the words that you use a message to someone she has not met yet. She uses formal title. She references his relationship with her father. She never mentions having met him or being indebted to him for saving her from that one time she was kidnapped by the guy from Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think we already mentioned that if the Grand Inquisitor is dead, that we've invalidated the entire Rebels show. I mean, he's called it out perfectly. You know, People are in a room somewhere and they're like, how do we get Obi-Wan to leave tattooing to go here well we get uh, I, I don't, uh, yeah I'm sorry this is starting to get frustrating the people who are writing the show and trying to figure out the plot were not paying attention to the consequences of the actions that they were taking on the page uh, and some of these shortcuts that they're doing to simply move the characters around where they need to be cause some serious ripples throughout the rest of, of Star Wars canon and, and it's very problematic Leia is a big part of this, clearly. I really don't see an effective way to bring her into the show unless she has her own storyline elsewhere. But the acting performance of this young woman, this girl, do I think she is Princess Leia at 10 years old? Yeah, I mean, I can see some of the qualities. I think the writer only has a surface level understanding of Leia. We want her to be brave. We want her to be fearless. We want her to be smart. Yes, but she's still 10 years old. And so the way that her character is written, a 20-year-old in a 10-year-old's body, and yet when we need her to be a frightened 10-year-old and make silly decisions, she does. So there's a contradiction. (laughs) How do you feel about Leia in the show? I agree with the assessment of the writing of her character. Clearly, they are writing episode four, Princess Leia. There are moments where it's cute, but once she gets kidnapped, her character should change completely. You know, it's a 10 year old girl who is kidnapped, who's away from her family and has no companions other than her robot that then gets crushed. She should be terrified. Um, she should be less lippy with everybody. Um, I, I get her trying to, to whack Obi-Wan and get out of the room, not knowing who he is and not trusting him. But then she's fearless to the point of being stupid. Uh, She doesn't care about everything that's going on around her or is not aware of it, which is even worse. She's off like running around wanting to try things on the whole scene with him. He's trying to buy her a disguise and she's like, wow, I'm going to take the gloves too. You know, all stuff like being spoiled like that, like acting like a spoiled brat. Uh, but then having these moments of, you know, extreme maturity or wisdom beyond her years, telling Obi-Wan why he, he's acting the way he's acting and all stuff. Like, that's weak sauce. You know, she's had no forced training or whatever. And it, it, this is part of a larger trend in, in Disney+. Plus. Adults are dumb. Kids have all the answers. And it's, it's They're incredibly self-aware. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> extremely. And it's 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 maddening because, like you say, the writing, they wrote this show and then, I don't know, maybe the memo didn't get over to casting that these are supposed to be adult characters. I don't know. And I'd say it's just weird. And then if you're going to be a wise adult and you're going to make these dumb decisions and it shows that you're arrogant, which then doesn't bode well for your character, it makes the audience or whatever, the people viewing these characters really question What is this character really all about? Because if they're this wise and smart and know all and can, you know, read into your soul, you think they would figure out they can't jump across that chasm. I I don't think that her involvement in this series was entirely necessary. Uh, I could see her being in it as a background character, not necessarily fan service, but of like acknowledging what's going on in, in the universe at that moment. But now we've got her fully invested and fully in the show She's probably going to be more of a character than Luke will be in this show. Again, I I have no problems with the young lady who is in the role. 
She is an actress. She has been given a script. She is doing her best. Please don't send her hate mail, but maybe we should find out the writer's Twitter because this is just really, really bad. Yeah, we, we need to we need some answers to some things. Um, and I hope we don't waste any more time with the Princess Leia stuff. We got four episodes left, uh, but uh, I, I feel like it's going to fall short. And that makes me sad because I would like so many other people was very excited to see Ewan McGregor come back and, you know, Hayden Christensen and, and others. But the announcement of a show and the excitement over it and potentially the excitement generated by the trailers seems to never pay off. It is a neck, the next step down and a trend down for some of these streaming shows that we're getting. And so my hope is, is that the Andor one will look better and feel better. You know, we'll see. I might not be around for Andor. This was a heavy blow to waste this opportunity, uh, or worse than waste, to make choices that intentionally diminish yet another hero from my childhood is something that's not sitting well with me. How could it? I've been down this road with Disney, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker. Now I'm headed down the same predictable road with Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, uh, and all of the leaks are proving true. So if we end up at the point where the leaks say we will, there's a really good chance I'm not around for Andor. It's hard. Uh, I really enjoy almost everything Star Wars to the point that Lucas sells to Disney. But since things have not gone well, and I'm not saying that I'll give up on Star Wars, but I will need to make adjustments. And I'm, I, I don't know if I can continue to support Disney Lucasfilm under Kathleen Kennedy, the portrayal of these characters. I, I will vote with my dollars. No toys, no T-shirts, no Disney Plus subscription. Why would I continue to support tearing down this this thing that I love? How do you feel? I mean, I'm in a similar at a similar point, I guess. We have talked about our collecting and, and how that's changed. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the amount of stuff that comes out and you just can't stay on top of it anymore. And the other thing has to do with the ever increasing prices. And then, you know, we get to the stuff that's going on at Disney Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy as as leader of that entity. Um, you know, I've I stopped paying for Disney Plus a while ago, back around the time of the Gina Carano situation. And, you know, I'm I'm spreading my dollars around on other fandoms that aren't being completely ruined uh, by the companies that own them. I saw this with some other collectors and other members of the communities when the when the sequel movies first came out, where people just said, nope, I'm cutting it off here. I'm sticking with the stuff from my youth that made me happy. In, in retrospect or in hindsight, I think that I probably should have done that as well. Uh, but there are things that have come up here and there that I have thoroughly enjoyed, like Rogue One, like Solo, like Rebels. So I can't say that Disney has done me wrong completely, but they're working really hard at it. And it's going to it's going to take a gesture to get me fully reinvested in the franchise for sure. Uh, and, you know, they can start by firing Kathleen Kennedy and half the people that work at Lucasfilm and getting more people like Dave Filoni in there who actually care about the franchise uh, as much as the fans do. So that's probably the first step. And, you know, and if they don't, they don't. That's fine. They're a business. They can make their own decision. I'm not calling for boycotts, but they have taken this thing that has been a part of our entire lives for the most part, uh, and they have broken it. And and there's times, you know, when I feel like they, they're doing it on purpose, uh, specifically to make a certain demographic of people suffer. I can forgive to a point incompetence because they don't know how to do it. But if they're doing this intentionally uh, to get at the fans or the older fans or the fans of the original trilogy, that's just despicable and uh, unacceptable. But, you know, I will not judge this and I will not make any decisions until it's completely over. But as as we both said, the, the warning signs are there. It doesn't look good. Well, the initiative is not authorized.
about Clorin's or his Twilight Lucasfilm Limited. The name Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, while rights reserved. Galactic Initiative is registered trademark, and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holders. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.